Hello YouTube and welcome to channel A cube. In today's video, we will be replacing the battery on an iPad Air model A1475. The iPad is old and the battery is not doing very well. It dies out in about 15 minutes even after a 100% full charge. Before we start, keep in mind that all electronic devices are handled differently and have different breaking points. So, if you have no prior experience, please take your device to the service center. Proceed at your own risk. The only way to open the iPad would be to remove the screen first and then access the components beneath it. Let's take it one step at a time and try and replace the battery. The glass panel on top is secured by adhesive and hence we will need to use heat to loosen it up. The panel is a touch sensor that relays the touch input to the motherboard and hence we will need to be careful when opening it. You may use a heat gun if you have one. In my case, I'm using a hairdryer. We will need to heat the edges of the iPad to loosen the glue. Don't get it too hot. Once this is done, we are going to use an opening tool. In my case, it's just a razor blade. Slowly make our way around the screen edges to separate the adhesive from the panel. A very important thing to remember is that the right side of the iPad Air which has the volume buttons has two ribbon cables and hence we will need to avoid prying on it. Also, make sure that you're careful when prying around the front camera and the home button. There are specific ribbon cables that go to the motherboard from these components as well. Slowly. Lift the panel up and swing it to the other side. The panel still might have some adhesive on it. So make sure that this movement is slow. Once the panel is flipped over, we can now identify the ribbon cables that are going out to the touch sensor and the home button. Let me point these out for you. So you can see one there and the other one just at the edge of the screen. That's the home button socket and that's where the front camera is placed. Over to the other side. We need to be careful in the next steps so that we don't disturb these ribbon cables. In order to get to the battery, we are going to remove the screen. This screen is secured by four screws. Let me point these out for you. The one to the bottom right, the one to the top right. The other two over to the left hand side are covered with stickers. So you will need to open these stickers first in order to reveal the screws. Let's have a closer look here. That is the bottom left screw and the top left screw. So there are four screws in total holding down the screen. Let's remove these screws now. The screws are small and hence make sure you keep them in a safe place for reassembly. An important thing to remember before we proceed to the next step is the orientation of the iPad. Here you can see that the iPad's front camera is facing towards me and the home button is towards the top. 
This is because there is a connector cable that goes to the screen to the top left corner of the iPad. Hence, we are going to need to flip the screen upwards and away from me. The ribbon cable that connects to the screen has enough room for it to bend over to the other side. We can see that this hatch cover is the one that covers the cable which connects to the screen. The other cables that go under the hatch cover are for the digitizer or the touch input and the home button. There are three screws that hold down the hatch cover. These are even smaller than the ones that held down the LCD screen. Make sure you keep them in a safe place for reassembly. Let's use a plastic prying tool to try and open up the hatch cover now. As we can see, the connector for the screen is embedded onto the hatch cover. So once you remove the hatch cover, this will let you lift the screen and keep it aside. This gives us complete access to the battery. There's one screw that's holding down the battery. That's just over the connector. We're going to unscrew this as well. There are three sets of screws which we have removed till now. We need to be careful not to mix them up. Here we can see that the first four screws are for the LCD screen, the next three are for the hatch cover, and the last one would be for the battery. There are a few other ways that you can remove the battery. That would be by removing the complete motherboard and all the connections to it. But in this case, we are going to try to pry the battery and slide it out. We need to be extremely careful when pry battery out. The lithium ion battery can ignite if pierced, hence be careful. This is the replacement battery that I got off Amazon. Getting the battery into the connector is pretty simple. The battery comes pre-installed with double-sided tape to keep it in place. We need to slide the battery in on the connector, slowly lift the motherboard and push it inwards. The process of reassembly will be the exact same steps in the reverse order. We first secure the battery connection with the single screw. We then take the screen and place it just above the hatch cover connection. We need to firmly press on the hatch cover to make sure that the connector is in place. Now we will secure the hatch cover with its three screws. Once this is done, we gently flip the screen over. Make sure that it's not caught up with the ribbon cables that go over to the digitizer. We then secure the screen with the four screws that we had removed earlier. Make sure that the screen is clean 
else give it a quick wipe. We can now flip over the glass panel on top and secure it firmly from the sides. I have used double sided tape once again to get the panel back in place. And now for the real test. Let's plug it in and see what happens. And there we have the Apple logo. The battery replacement has been successful. The touch is working fine. The home button is functioning as well. The battery status is yet to initialize. I will need to charge and discharge the battery five times to condition it. The front camera is also responsive and is working. This has been a successful replacement guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please do share your comments on this and please do write to me if you have any questions. See you guys in the next one.